Lost in transmission officially ended after this happened. But I may have pushed it too far by inviting some friends to join us on the track. Oh, look what I told you. Oh, oh bust in the windshield. I windshield. told you you were going to screw this car. Why did you let them break the windshield? They busted the windshield. The History Channel has been known to have some of the most amazing historical documentaries on television, with such hits as Ancient Aliens, American Pickers, Pawn Stars, and Swamp People. It has even spawned some dramas such as Vikings. With such success in these areas, it came as a pretty big surprise when they tried to get into the genre of car restoration with the show Lost in Transmission. How did it do? Spoiler alert, it was cancelled. But a show getting cancelled isn't exactly big news, that happens all the time. However, here we are talking about a show that appeared on a network that is famed for producing some of the most well-liked shows on television, and it was cancelled after only one season. Something had to have gone incredibly wrong for this to happen. Well, as always, let's take a look at it. But before we do, make sure to hit subscribe for more crusty content and like this video to support the channel. So, first off, let's review what the show is about. As stated on the website imdb.com, Top Gear co-host and automotive aficionado Rutledge Wood and his friend and fellow car fanatic George Flanagan are on a mission to rescue America's greatest rides from barns and backyards across the South. Together, Rutledge and George will comb the garages of America to rescue the underappreciated examples of automotive styling that time forgot, fix them up, and get them back on the road. Their journey will take them off the beaten track, where they will get lost in local traditions, meet eccentric characters, and discover the heart of American car culture. Two friends on the ultimate road trip, saving America's greatest, weirdest, and coolest cars. That sounds pretty fancy, doesn't it? Let's shorten it up just a little bit. The show will be just like American Pickers, where two friends look for cars to restore instead of antiques. Okay, we may be giving them just a little too much of a hard time. The truth is that it was a little bit of a one-hit wonder when it was out in 2015. The presenter from Top Gear, Rutledge Wood, certainly made things fun and entertaining while his good friend did the role of the mechanic, sizing everything up. There it is! Wow, look at this thing! All its magnificent orange. Their trips across the country brought them face to face with some of the most underappreciated classic cars ever. There was even one time where they rescued a DeLorean that was once submerged in water after a hurricane. The best part of that restoration was the fact that after they fixed it up, they drove it at 88 miles per hour, just like Michael J. Fox did in the movie that made it famous, Back to the Future. Come down, come down! 91 miles an hour. 91 miles an hour, you made it! 91, brother! So why didn't the show survive past one season? Usually, for something to have that short of a lifespan, it really has to be terrible. Here are a few things that could have taken away from its lifespan. Holy cow! What has happened to this car? Look at this! Hurricane Sandy! You got to be kidding! This thing is rusted out! The show was featured on the wrong platform. As we briefly hit on earlier, the History Channel is more known for historical documentaries, nature shows, and informative reality shows that can give us a glimpse into some sort of national or world history. That's quite the far cry from a car restoration show, which attracts grease monkeys and classic car enthusiasts. So why did they greenlight this project? In reality, the concept was there. People love to see the adventures of good friends as they set out on a mission of sorts. Just like American Pickers, they would endure the drives, experience the cultures, and soak in the landscapes as they came across some of the most amazing yet dilapidated cars. Come on. Come. Oh, come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on. But with a little elbow grease, they could be running again, just like the day they came off the assembly lines. With such a successful model as American Pickers, how could they go wrong? The problem was, the people who take the time to watch the History Channel are not your grease monkeys and gearheads. Those channels are usually motor trend or discovery. By airing the show on a channel that is mostly geared towards people who are more towards education, 
While this type of show could be considered educational, it fits a niche that reaches too small of a demographic for the History Channel. In the end, it all comes down to viewers. While it has never been confirmed that this is the reason why the show was cut after only one season, it definitely isn't out of the realm of possibility. Someone was living in this at some point, you can tell. Oh yeah, I think this is a nest. Oh! The reviews were absolutely horrible. You can't have a show without viewers, and this show had precious few. So it was up to the team to figure out a way to entertain the few people that actually bothered to watch. Here's the problem. They didn't even do that. As a matter of fact, they missed the mark by a long shot. Well, nearly everyone who watched the show would agree that they had the right idea as far as the premise, they missed the mark when it came to providing entertainment. Take for example some of the reviews that have come from imdb.com. I'm a big fan of car shows. There are some I don't like, but most are informative and somewhat entertaining. I recently purchased an FJ40, so I was excited to see that there was going to be a show about restoring one. I was hoping to learn something from the show about the restoration process, because I consider myself a novice at this. I can honestly say I learned absolutely nothing. To make things worse, I had to watch the hosts put together a VW Jetta pickup truck. I did learn if you put an airbag in a fire, it would explode. Good educational TV. Put together a dork pretending to be an expert with a doofy hillbilly and you have history channels lost in transmission. If you like seeing rich kids do stupid things to squander money while pretending like they are some sort of authority on the subject, then you'll love this show. It really seems they went out of their way to find the strangest and most distasteful individuals to feature on the show. I wish I could get the wasted hour of my life back. These reviews were given way back in 2015 when the show was airing on the History Channel. They were reflective of the times. It was less about the cars and more about the friends. You may have picked up in a few of those viewer comments, but one thing that people had a big problem with was the fact that the show didn't cover much about the actual cars themselves. It was more about two friends who went on road trips together in order to find some hidden gems. We should add that there had also been some accusations of producers planting cars and directing the hosts to act like they were surprised. However, as none of these claims were ever substantiated, we will just leave it as it is, which is an interesting fact. Take for example the very first episode which featured the rescue of a DeLorean. There were many complaints here that more filler footage was shown than the actual repairs and restoration of the vehicle. The pair would drive golf carts around the building, talking to each other and making stupid jokes. And every once in a while, it would cut to the car where some people would be doing some sort of work. In short, it was found that many of the episodes were like this and did not show anyone anything about what it takes to repair or restore a classic vehicle. So, do all of these factors make Lost in Transmission a bad show? The answer would depend on who is watching. There were so many misses in the execution. However, there were a couple of people who found it to be very interesting. The demographics who took more to the show were families and those who did not have much of a working knowledge of cars. To these people, seeing a classic car and hearing witty banter between friends makes for good entertainment. But at the same time, that's also where the History Channel missed. People come to that channel less for entertainment and more for education. And this is where the car people will tell you they missed and miss big time. Don't worry though, the hosts had already solidified themselves in the industry. Even though this could qualify as one of their biggest flops, they have not been hurting for work since. Let's just hope that the History Channel remembers in the future what it is good at and what it is bad at. Auto restoration shows would definitely fall in that bad category. Hopefully history doesn't repeat itself. Thank you for watching till the end of this video. Let us know what you thought of Lost in Transmission in the comments below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a like. We'll see you next time.